and then everybody... Miron the robot and his creator have left the laboratory again. They're on the stage of Berlin's Komische Oper to test Muon's perceptions. What challenges Muon is easy for us, like recognizing faces. This table is almost skin-colored, so that confuses him. It seems silly, but he's really just analyzing a camera image. Or directional hearing. We almost instantly know where a sound is coming from. But this space has so much echo that a machine like Muon has difficulty. Robot maker Manfred Hilt has been working on Muon for six years. Now he's preparing the robot's stage career, together with performance artists from the Gob Squad and singers from the Komische Oper. We kind of made a short list because there's a, there's a few projects here in Berlin that are looking at uh, artificial intelligence. And uh, actually our first port of call was... Uh, was was Manfred. Manfred is a very articulate, uh, he's very artistic as well and he was completely open to the idea and really embraced it and immediately had ideas of how this would also be very useful for his research so it was kind of love at first sight. Gob Squad artist Sean Patton has been fascinated by autonomous intelligent robots since he was a child. Of course, the machines in Star Wars are different from Muran, but ultimately he's expected to make decisions for himself on stage. And the robot is even meant to show feelings, even if he doesn't know the word. We're interested in creating a real situation where there's a real task to be filled. And this is very much like uh, the atmosphere of a scientific experiment. They want to set the robot off doing something real and see how it succeeds and see how it fails. And that's very much our approach to performance. It's live, it can fail, it can go wrong. We learn from it and make it different or better the next time. For both the artists and the scientists, the long-term project has already brought all sorts of benefits. In rehearsals, we've had situations we've never had in the lab. Singing, large spaces. I've noted here the problem of near and far. Something happens very near the robot, while 20 people are moving and making noises upstage. And it often looks back there for several minutes, although the actual action is downstage. So directing attention is something we can study much better by experiencing natural situations and correcting it. Now it's back to the lab. To reprocess everything that happened today, right down to the last detail. 